How's it going folks? I'm Matthew, this is The Morris Cards, and today we're going to be doing part two of our community deck list competition thing. If you missed it, part one we covered last week, eight commander decks submitted by you viewers, and you guys voted for which ones were your favorite, and those votes came in. They were really close, but the winners were pod number one, the Staxolotl list by listener, and the winner of pod two was Will and Max, the 80s kids blood pod variant kind of deck. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know which of these deck lists are your favorite for pod number three and pod number four. Thank you as always to my amazing patrons. There's a lot more of you um, having to get through some of the patron submitted deck list when I do tournament reports. So thank you so much for all of the support over there. That support helps a lot. Using the whatnot link in the description below, get yourself $15, helps the channel a ton. I can't understate it. With all that being said, let's hop into it. Use the link in the description below to download Whatnot and you'll get $15 to use to buy magic singles, sealed product, get anything that you want really. There's no limits. You just get $15 on the account for free just for signing up. This is one of the best ways you can support the channel. And again, it's just free stuff. Use the link in the description below. Give Whatnot a try. This might be the most typical commander pairing I've done. Akiri Thrasios has kind of overtaken Bruce Thrasios in that archetype, but it has a really different approach and I still want to really highlight it. So this is a Kyrios. Instead of being a Thrasios deck, it's really an Akiri deck, which Akiri can actually be pretty good on the board. It, it's a first strike vigilance, gets plus one attack for each artifact you control. And yeah, we've got some artifacts to buff it cheaply. We've got Ornithopter, Esper Sentinel, doing like Magda, Ornithopter, Paradise, Academy Manufacturer. Like we're doing like Dockside Treasure Loops with meal. We have access to that kind of stuff. And then we're running like Staxi effects like Thalia, Avon Mind Sensor. And then we're locking people down a little bit. Lodestone Golems, kind of the same thing. And it's a 5-3 and it's an artifact. And then Slicer in the list, just coming at you, beating people down, like really pressuring the life totals. You know, sort of generically powerful cards like Gilded Drake or, you know, here like kind of mid-rangey cards. We're even running like Lanoir Elves over Birds of Paradise just to have a 1-1, one -one, I'm guessing. That's really the only reason you would do that in this deck list. At least from what I can see. Pretty wild stuff just in the creature package of a really interesting approach like, you know, using Facebreaker, really pressuring life totals, being a little bit staxy. In the sorceries, kind of typical stuff. We do have Savine's Direct, meaning we're more likely on Breach. We'll see. Jessica's Will Not a card you always see here, but I mean, we're, we have two cheap commanders, so whatever. No wheel over the Windfall and string, but then we got Spinning Wheel Cake. <laughs> X, X, green, green. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each of X target creatures and our planeswalkers. Use Akiri to kind of like bite a whole bunch of creatures all at once and have like a sort of one-sided effect. That's a cool one. I hadn't seen that one before. So we are on brain freeze. So that means we're breaching. You know, we are doing intuition lines. We've got the Eldama Shawl Force figure here. And we're on Metallic Rebuke. Two blue, improvised, so you can spend one blue. Counter target spell unless the controller pays three. Kind of like a mystical dispute. It will be better in some scenarios and definitely worse in others. But we are doing we are doing our best to get a lot of artifacts into play. And then artifact package. Pretty normal it is really weird to see graph digger's cage in a underworld breach deck we're not really that heavy on the creature tutors but we're not it's not like we're a neoform eldritch evolution deck the kind of stuff that would normally shut this deck down we're not really doing that with this list but we are breaching so it, there will be awkward times where this can kind of shut us out too but we also like can kind of deploy this in a game state where we're kind of doing the aggressive smack you with a curry and slicer thing um uh, and then we're doing sensei's top and Mystic Forge, which also both kind of line up awkwardly with Graph Digger's Cage. But we are doing top Mystic Forge. I don't think we have a reducer. So I don't see a way to do it infinitely in the list. Maybe I would put like the Helm of Awakening kind of effect, something like that in here, some way to reduce our artifact costs so that that does just win. Because as it is, it doesn't seem like it's doing a lot of good in here. And even that with like, it lines up a little awkwardly with like Thalia, right? Where our, it works on us too. So like, we're not really gonna be able to do that loop. So maybe we don't quite need that. I do think it's an interesting direction to go. And then our enchantment package is pretty typical. I think if we're gonna be on like a top kind of thing in this deck, maybe counterbalance is something to consider too. I think we're doing all, art, we're doing artifact lands too, right? Yeah, we have the Ancient Den. We have the Seed of the Sinai. We have Treasure Vault, Tree of Tales do an Urza Saga. Very cool approach. I would maybe, you don't, I don't think you have to lean as far away as this list maybe does. You could maybe still do like Kenan Basalt. Seems to line up perfectly well with what you're doing. Swap out like a dork for um, Birds of Paradise. Thornithopter is maybe a little cutesy unless I'm just missing a line, but I don't. There's a couple of things I would, I would probably address with it, but it looks really cool. And I really wanted to highlight this kind of archetype of making an aggro mid-range like a Kiri Thrasios deck. 
Connor CDH's Da Vinci stacks running Leonardo Da Vinci as our commander. So Leonardo Da Vinci is two in a blue, three blue, blue until end of turn. Thopters you control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. And you can spend two in a blue, draw a card, then discard a card. If the discarded card was an artifact, exile it from your graveyard. If you do create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a zero two Thopter artifact creature with flying in addition to its other types. This is brand new. So uh, we're going to be learning in real time how exactly it works. Not a lot of creatures. Rexian Revoker, just a CDH card at this point, maybe a little bit weaker in a Masters meta. Metal Worker, very powerful card. We're running a lot of artifacts. This thing can make us a million mana. Filigree Sages, two and a blue untapped target artifact. I bet that combos with something. Metamorph Subtlety, Koldoth the Forge Master, sack three artifacts, search for an artifact, put it into the battlefield. We're going to have a lot of artifacts. We, we, can, we can probably do something crazy here. Auton Soldier, uh, we talked about this one. It's a six mana clone that isn't legendary and has Myriad. So you can clone a commander, clone one of your legends, and then also give something Myriad. If you have a Meteor Golem that has Myriad, it's pretty freaking ridiculous. Torrential Gear Hulk is dope. She enters, cast an instant from your graveyard for free. We're making one with like a Leonardo da Vinci, then it's pretty dope because it the Ornithopter is the thing. Whatever we discard, so we spend like two in a blue, discard Torrential Gear Hulk, make a Torrential Gear Hulk, counter somebody's spell or something, make a Platinum Angel in response to a Thoracle win attempt. One with a machine, three in a blue, draw cards equal to the highest mana value among artifacts you control. We saw this in um, one of the decks last week. And then Bribery, just a card we've been seeing more of. Very good in, I would say, most pods right now. Just the best interaction. There is a dramatic reversal, of course. If we can add infinite mana, we can go infinite with our commander, draw loot through our deck, make all of our artifacts, uh, put them all into play, which is pretty awesome. No mystical tutor. In a lot of scenarios, would just be, you know, find a counter spell, maybe set up dramatic reversal, Isochron Scepter. Artifacts is where the big money is. We got 35. Ah, oh, this deck looks cool. Cage, also here. We're Staxi. Manifold Key, we've got tons of artifacts, energies. Ostermech, great clone. It's an artifact we can put into play. Ice Crown Scepter is one of our win cons. Staff of Completion, it's another card we've seen a bit of. Has a lot of utility. Tangle Wire, Staxing People Out. Lots of like these kind of things got submitted for this tournament. Uh, there's no Winter Orb here. Thousand Year Elixir, Machine God's Effigy, another clone, that's an artifact. Almer, whatever this archive. If you would gain life, you gain twice that much life. If you would draw a card except the first one, you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two instead. Uh, this means we go card positive with our Leonardo da Vinci, which is pretty sick. Page Sun, so we just pick blue, our creatures get bigger, we get double mana. Think of these through the lens of we have a commander that can spend three mana and put any of these into play. So we can spend three mana and we get a God Pharaoh statue. Your spell costs two more. Magic Mirror into play. Portal to Phyrexia especially. Like people will be like, bro, how do I lose at this point? And then just three mana loot. Uh, Portal to Phyrexia? Any response? No? Okay. Dork. Wonders Crucible. Permanent control have ward two at the beginning of your instep. Mill two cards and exile non-line card. A random from your graveyard copy you may cast without paying its mana cost. No like Camille here. Oh, a Chroma's Memorial. That's pretty cool. What's really cool about Leonardo da Vinci is he has like a powerful kind of broken aspect to it of just get ridiculous things into play very cheaply. And then also has just built in the how to close out a game where no one can do anything. You just make a bunch of, you know, your thopters just become massive and smack into people. Enchantments, back to basics, basically free here. Rhystic Study, Mystic Remora. Yeah, I think this deck is awesome. I'm really curious to see how this commander plays out. I think this is going to be a super fun one to play with. Next up, we are looking at Ludovic Necrogenius. If you're not familiar, blue and a black. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, mill a card, and you can spend X, blue, blue, black, black, exile X creature cards from your graveyard, transform Ludovic, X can't be zero, activate only as a sorcery. This thing has a lot of limitations on it, but when he flips, transforms into Olog, and he becomes a copy of a creature card exile with it, except it's a 4-4, four, four, and then you put counters on it equal to the number of creatures. What are we doing with this? We have ways to loot, like with Jace Finn's Prodigy. Uh, things like that. And then we're turning our commander into a massive game winning creature. So we have sort of generically good creatures here. Uh, Ghostly Pilfer, Hero Great Glass Spinner. Creatures you control have whenever this creature becomes target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, counter that. And then we got Big Boys, Consecrated Sinks, which is very castable. Jinkataxius doubles your first artifact in center sorcery, counters the first one for each of your opponents. Nezahal, draw a million cards. Toxrill, the rest of the play, you know, no one else gets to have a board anymore. I bet Toxiel is busted right now. Ancient Silver Dragon uh, and then Jinkataxius. You draw seven. Each opponent hand size is reduced to zero. Yeah, we got big old beaters. We have like a blue-black reanimator theme. Our commander 
both enables it and is like, you know, a cheap Yurse whatever enabler. Got the reanimate on Mark Grave, putting stuff in there. Just good cards. Agadim's Awakening makes sense for what we're doing, but it's going to be hard to have the mana to like Agadim's Awakening back something massive. We potentially could. Instance, lots of interaction, as we expect. Got the Entomb, of course, for a reanimator deck. Miscast showing up here. Cabal Red. Cyber Conversion. Turn to our creature face down. It's a 2 2. Thing is just kind of gone for the time being. Nice to use on like a commander. We do have Intuition, which is cool because with our commander in play, kind of insta up Intuition, put three monsters, get one in our hand, put two in the yard, and then just boop, boop, turn, turn our dude into one or just reanimate one. I would probably like to see a Mox Amber here. I think if we're running a, if we're, if we're going to run a two mana commander, we might as well run the Mox Amber. Enchantments, we got the Animate Dead, Dance of the Dead, Necromancy, lots of ways to bring back our broken creatures and then Ristic Mystic, Dress Down. I love seeing the uh, Surveil Ant. We don't really have like a lot of commanders that are inherently reanimator oriented. Simple, it doesn't have to devote a million slots to it. You could even go like Slimmer on this. Really cool approach, really like this list. Last for this pod, this is a bit more of an established deck, but I want to talk about it because I haven't got to I'll do a lot of talking of, about this list. And I think it's just a really sick commander. And that is Dahada. We're looking at the Dahada Dash by Exodius. Turbo Breach Strat, Mulligan, Discipline Necessary, Turn 2 or Die. Dahada is a really sick commander that super fuels Underworld Breach. So its main ability, it's, you know, four mana, Planeswalker, it's Mardu. Minus three, you reveal the top four cards of your library. You put any number of legendary cards from them into your hand, the rest in your graveyard, you make a treasure for each card put in your graveyard. It can kind of just be mana neutral. You just play this thing, minus three, mill four, make four treasures. You didn't even spend any mana. You just got four cards in your yard. Lines up very well with Underworld Breach. Lines up with cards like Goblin Welder, Goblin Engineer that are just artifact synergy cards. Magda. Other things that stand out. So like I said, Magda, we got the Goblin Engineer Welder package. We are doing Dual Caster Twin Flame, it looks like. And we are doing Mayhem Devil loops potentially, or just, you know, we have, we generate treasures. Mayhem Devil could just be a card we play to mess up the board. And then we got Lurse as a way to buy back some stuff. Replay things from the graveyard. We're going to be doing a lot of that. And it's a legend. Something like Luris, if you minus Dihada, mill something over that you like, and then you want the Luris to be able to get that card and, and replay it, that can be really useful. Sorceries. We got the Scheming Symmetry. God, this looks nonsensical. It looks ridiculous. That is like a basically a win con with Opposition Agent. With any top deck tutor with Dihada, you can turn it into an Entomb, if that makes sense. Faithless Looting, Rite of Flame, Finale of Promise is cool. I've been seeing this card show up a little bit more in Index outside of just like Inala. So with Flicker, what you can do is if you have Underworld Breach, Dahada in play and Flicker, you can minus Dahada, whatever it's used, you main treasures, you mill four, then you cast Flicker, exile three, Flicker Dahada, mill four. So you've got one extra card in the yard and you netted two mana off the treasure. So then you can go through your library with Breach and Flicker, keep doing Flickering Dahada, and then keep milling over and netting mana. It's kind of its own Breach LED brain freeze line that you get access to in this on top of being able to do Breach LED and then our Breach grinding station. And then Bitter Ordeal is really cool. Search target player's library for a card, remove that card from the game, then that player shuffles his or her library. And it has Gravestorm. When you play this spell, copy it for each permanent put into a graveyard this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So it won't trigger off of milling, but it will trigger off of cracking treasures because those are permanents that go into a graveyard or were put into a graveyard. We can use this just to search our opponent's libraries and get rid of their win cons, things like that. But then you also just, at a certain point, you can, and net gravestorm and just get rid of everybody's stuff like just, the library is kind of gone it's done we're on the beseech the mirror j will just turbo mardu nonsense angel's grace okay lets us gnaw is super deep nice not losing is good also sometimes we've got the entomb uh we're doing lots of stuff with our graveyard we got gladrill's dismissal face creatures out orm's chant we're doubling up on the silence effects we do have the tithe so we might be a little bit lower on lands this you know lets you search up planes final fortune notably there wasn't uh warrior's oath and last chance up here so just the one final fortune effect so partition is removal also can let you like potentially net mana with like a dock side something like that so we are both citadel deck because we're we're based like that we've got sensei's top with citadel to go through our deck underworld breach necropotence touch the spirit realm touch the spirit realm double our dock side just be removal Necropotence, we're just doing it. We're doing Necro, Citadel, Nas. We're just jamming. We're, we're jamming for, we're jamming wins and 22 lands, which is not the lowest that we're going to look at today. But according to the poster, was the lowest to uh, top 16 event, I think, on EDH top 16. We do have, what is this, one surveil land? 
the black red one makes sense. Yeah, again, this isn't the spiciest deck in the world. It is just a good, clean Mardu turbo deck. Also, no, there was no Cloud Stone Curio. Probably not going infinite with Mayhem Devil then. Nice stuff though. Those were our decks for pod three. So let me know down below which of those four decks were your favorite out of that pod. And now we're going to look at our last pod for this top 16 that we're doing, starting off with Zerda. This is a deck that's had a little bit of a CDH resume in the past year or so. It's gotten really close at some big events. I think it's got like a top 16 at a couple of like medium sized events. This thing lets you go infinite, similar to like Kinnon. It's maybe not quite as broken of enabler, but it has completely different cards that you get access to. This just affects all our abilities. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less. So... Lots of different things we can do. Walking Ballista is going to be an outlet for us. Squirrel can give us protection. So we're going to have white and red staples. I don't want to say Boros staples. We don't really cover Boros very often. So we do run some stacks pieces. We have Ether Sworn Canonist. So no more than two non-artifacts. Spirit of the Labyrinth. Players can't draw more cards. Oswald. We've seen this one tutor up for artifacts. It's going to be super important in this deck that combos with lots of different artifacts. Zerda can go infinite with Basalt Monolith and Grim Monolith to net infinite colorless mana. And then we have different places we can use that. We can use that on Balls Invoker. I think it's Balls. Spend eight mana, deal four to each opponent. You have infinite mana, your opponents are dead. Cogwork Assembler, create a token that's a copy of target artifact. The artifact gains that token gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. We have an artifact creature like this guy. Get to make infinite hasty creatures and smack our opponents. Valakut Invoker is another outlet to dump into to deal mana. So we have at least four outlets just here uh, in the creature package to be able to kill people. Ooh, that's another, that's a cool one. Fourth Air Langus Cube and Legacy Staple showing up here. That, that's, you make infinite tutus. That's another way to win. That's really cool. Tutors, Wheel, Savine's Wreck, J Will, stuff we'd expect. Instance, we got the Angel's Grace. This card is just back to CDH staple status, I think, at this point. Mana Tithe showing up. No typical trickery, nothing like that. We do have the Reprieve. Uh, ricochet Trap lets us change target. Maybe you expect to see like an Orm's Chant or like typical trickery, like I had said. Artifacts, whole bunch of them. Grim Monolith and Ever Salt Monolith both go infinite with Zerda. Candelabra of Taunus is X on tap X separate lands. That can be reduced down. X equals three, you can spend one mana to untap three lands. Pretty nifty, huh? Dino DNA, we can go infinite with that. We reduce it down. It makes it easier to like net infinite mana with like a Dockside or with a Dino DNA or something like that. Fence Grip or Texas. Moon Key help us tutor up for one of our combo pieces. Scroll Rack gives us some card selection. Thorn of Amethyst locks people down. Grinding Station, I'm guessing we're a Breach deck. We are. Which could line up awkward. I see the Deafening Silence down there. That could line up awkwardly with like a Breach loop. Brass's Tunnel Grinder, which we've seen this one before. Enters, discarding number of cards, draw that many cards. Give you some card selection. At the end of the turn, if you descend it, put a board counter on it. Trinisphere, locking people out. Staff of Domination is really cool. You can spend, reduce the cost on these. And then Enchantments. We have Deafening Silence, which again, is usually going to be good for us, I think. But it can be awkward if we're doing like a breach loop. Take this excavation that can let us go infinite with Dockside Extortionist. Can do other things with it, but it seems like it was what's mainly for. We've got the breach, touch the spirit realm, smothering tithe, trouble in pairs, which apparently was plagiarized art. <laughs> Very artifact combo we deck, just infinite mana, not even necessarily casting a lot of spells. Symbol of thing, boom, blow you up with activated abilities, locking the table down. Awesome stuff. Next up. I don't even know how to say this name. Bunny Joe Burton. This is a list I've been familiar with for a while now. Snoop Factory. Fast deck looking to present wins early and often using Conspicuous Snoop. Cards such as Goblin Recruiter and Doomsday. One card win con. Supported by the card advantage provided by Bolus Citadel. So, Rog Rayhan. Very fast deck. We're trying to go super turbo bird junt with lots of different overlapping kind of combos that we have access to. So let's take a look. We're going to have some generically good things here. Card that isn't technically legal yet. Tiny Bones, new one with this weird Comic Sans looking text. <laughs> Let you cast things from other people's graveyards. Other than the staple mana, we got Fury, Oliphant, which one will help us get stuff in our yard, which will have synergies with that as well as helping us have lands because we don't have a lot of them. This deck runs 17 actual lands with an 18th MDFC. So 18 lands, like the lowest land count you could ever even reasonably think of doing. And we're, we're throwing them away. We got a lumberjack. We're just throwing that land away because we need mana. We don't care about lands. We just we just need a little bit. We just need a little mana. We're just, of course, like stalactite stalker. This one's a little hard to evaluate for this kind of deck. These effects like Oliphant is a way to descend and scale this thing up and then kill something with it or smack people, whatever. So one of our main win lines is going to be with conspicuous snoop combo lines. Simplest stuff you can do is like have a conspicuous snoop, 
play a goblin recruiter or a doomsday to set up the top of your library where you can either give the snoop haste the turn you play it or set up a line where you go off the next turn and then you can use it with Kigijiki make infinite snoops and then you can make a copy of the goblin recruiter to put sling gang lieutenant on top and kill everybody depending on your how you're trying to set up and how you're trying to win through interaction you can do cool things like that you can get into spots where you're going for other win attempts and you're able to put like a vexing shusher on top protect your win attempts these can be really resilient and hard to deal with you can do it again with skirt prospector net mana once they get started once they get that first goblin recruiter it can be really difficult to interact with them and then yeah other tutors fiend artisan hyrax tower scout can just go infinite with their kiki jiki lots of mana we got land grant to help us go get a land because lord knows we need the help analyze the pollen is a new one that has made the kind of like collect evidence descend part of the deck have a better payoff you have something similar in traverse the oven wall basically both of these once enabled lets you search for a creature or land we've got doomsday which again we can use to set up those like noop lines all, all the cards will either find us way to win or find us way to make mana to, to find a way to make win <laughs> Lots of free interaction. Once upon a time, we need to find them lands. And then once upon a time is definitely castable as just a thing you can do in this deck, right? Uh, you could even have a situation where you like goblin recruiter once upon a cast once upon a time to get one of the goblins you recruited. Kind of weird, but I mean, it's the thing you can do, I guess. Go to our response, way to interact in gruel colors. Uh, Archdruid Storm lets us find a land, lets you just search for a creature, put it in a hand. Like this is just a super powerful card. Aether Vial lets us put creatures into play. That can be really busted. We've talked about this card before. Dowsing Dagger is one I haven't really got to talk about, I don't think. But yeah, when it enters the battlefield, you choose an opponent. They make two zero two plants. And then the creature you have, you hit somebody with it. It transforms. And then you get a land that adds three mana of any one color to your mana pool. It's pretty powerful. This is a card that I know Sam Black talked about in Rock Thrass at one point. I think it's since cut. Our Citadel, our One Ring. The one thing that will stand out about this deck compared to other turbo black red whatever decks is there's no underworld breach not here and then the lands there aren't many of them our citadel if you hit like two lands in a row off citadel god hates you that's all i can say <laughs> And then we have the attraction deck and the sticker sheets, though currently not using any attraction or sticker cards. Very cool deck, very unique, very burr all in. Sick stuff. I mean, just, just doing it with goblins. Next up, we are looking at Celebrant Pod. Critics are saying, looks like a garbage fire, but plays well. 100% better than Goto 90% of the time. If you want to do mono red, it seems like such a strong option. It just goes infinite with a lot of things. So Rionia is five man, beginning of combat on your turn. Create X tokens that are copies of another target creature you control, where X is one plus the number of instant sources you cast this turn. They gain haste, exile them. The basics are, at the very least, Rionia makes a copy of one of your creatures with haste at the beginning of combat. If you cast a bunch of instants and sorceries, you might get a whole bunch of them. You could get like five Doxides, you know, go off King, you deserved it. And then there's other things you can get. So like making a copy of Combat Celebrant. Combat Celebrant, when it attacks, you can untap your other creatures, get an additional combat phase, which has a new beginning of combat, which means you're on your triggers. One card combo right there with your commander. There's lots of similar effects that do that. It looks like the deck has gotten some upgrades with Fallout. Like Crimson uh, Caravan. It's gotta be Caravaneer, right? Caravaner. Tune Red, Double Strike, Trample. When it deals combat damage to player, make a Junk Token. So we got some new spice here, even more Marauder. So lots of just good things to copy good ETBs or strong effects, right? So like if you're going to have like three Riona triggers and you've got a Sardian Avenger and you make three of those, thing is a massive first strike trampling attacker. You don't even have to. They don't come into play tapped and attacking. You just make copies of them. So yeah, you can make copies like fake humble defectors, make two or three of those, draw a whole bunch of cards, give them to your opponents. They're not real. They don't get them. Harmonic Prodigies doubling our Riona triggers, which is ridiculous. Sorceries. We've got tutors. Ways to make mana, lots of extra turn effects. Those can be phenomenal. Impulse draw effects, kind of what we got to use in red. We've got heat shimmer. I believe there's no twin flame right? or dual cast mage yet. We don't really need that. We're just using that to double up on stuff. Hate mirage, three in a red. Choose up to two target creatures you don't control. For each of those creatures, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens can haste, exile them. Let's just get our opponent stuff as well as then, you know, we do this on our main phase, go to combat. We can get more and more of their stuff. Seize the day, lets you get extra combat. Andrag's rampage is a cool new one. Destroy all artifacts you don't control. Uh, then exile the top X card of your library. X is the number of artifacts that are put in graveyards from the battlefield this way. Put a creature card, exile this way onto the battlefield. Gain haste. Like, that's just, just so much. And we make so much mana. We have so many ways to generate a ton of mana. Man, I bet this thing goes crazy. Lots of ways to protect our stuff. 
another Final Fortune, ways to remove problematic permanents, or we'll cards like Delayed Bath Fireball, again, ways to get mana and cards. Artifacts, we do the Pyre of Heroes, kind of the birthing pod that's like based on the creature type. That makes the Goblin package even nicer, but yeah, we could still just like turn a Humble Defector into a Combat Celebrant to win, or we could turn, you know, Goblin Crater Maker into a Matron to get Dockside or into a Goblin Sharpshooter to really take over the board. This thing does a lot of work. We've got a lot of overlapping creature types to use this with. Cursed Mirror gives us access to a clone. Then now the infinite is cool. One mana tap in the turn. Activate this only during your turn. We can use this to keep our copies. We'll have a bunch of triggers to exile them at the end of turn because it's uh, at the beginning of the next end step trigger. And then we just activate Sundial to turn ins and uh, we get to keep them. So we're on connect the dots. When a creature you control attacks, exile on top card of your library face down. Discard your hand, sacrifice this, put all cards exile with it into their owner's hands. This kind of turns like all of your creatures into a Bomat Courier. But you don't have to sacrifice the creatures. You just sacrifice this thing. Aggravated Assault. If we're making like a copy of a Dockside and we can get in on people, if we're able to net mana on each attack or each combat, then we can go infinite combat. And then Grim Reaper Sprint. This is a new one. The main thing it can do is be a two mana extra combat that untaps the thing and also is a haste enabler. Rocking like all of the soul lands. That's cool. This is cool. I think if you want to play mono red, I would probably be more likely to point you here than Godo. Not that it necessarily has a better like track record or is it more proven. Like this has a lot going on for it and like could be built in a lot of different ways. I don't know. It just seems like a cool deck to me. And last up, we are looking at your Priscilla's The Black Cauldron, the Disney movie. No, not the Disney movie, the deck. It's a Sans White mid-range list. It looks to grind value with very strong engines. Close the game out with combat or crombat or cauldron slash breach related combos this is a deck that Scylla has been on for a while played against it a good amount of times and is using lots of advantages it's not trying to be like the fastest deck of the table it's really trying to set up a spot where it can win very safely or just grind advantage and beat people up it puts a lot of pressure on life totals you see like a car like minskin boo does both of those things really well it lets you utilize plus one plus one counters which this deck looks to do a lot more it lets you draw lots of cards lets you pressure life totals creatures we got spirit guides fury we got birds of paradise and Deathrite Shaman is the only traditional dorks. Tenderball, so maybe trying to speed it up a little bit. Ragavange, great card. Dolphy Voidwalker, powerful mid-range option. Ledger Shredder, Gilded Drake. Lots of kind of mid-rangey cards you might expect. Mayhem Devil, Bow Masters, like Metamore, Spellseeker. Spellseeker doesn't always show up in black decks, but I think in black green decks is a little bit more likely to show up if you're doing like Neoform stuff. The cards that stick out the most are cards like Braids. At this point, I've talked about this card on the channel a lot. It's just, you're netting stuff, you you can sacrifice things. You draw lots of cards. With this deck, you can like sacrifice Rayhan and put move the counters over to something else to apply pressure on something. Another one that she's been testing is Massacre Girl, which is four mana, menace, creatures you control have a wither, which means they deal damage in the form of minus one, minus one counters. And then when a creature an opponent control dies, if its toughness was less than one, draw a card. If a creature an opponent control died due to wither, you draw a card. Makes it to where people chump blocking is like you two for one them. You get to draw a card when they chump block you. It makes it to where Orcish Bowmasters and Mayhem Devil can shrink down opponent's creatures and also be a way to, for you to draw cards if you kill them that way. Just like a good sized creature that draws you cards. That's kind of what we're trying to do here, right? Niv Mizzet, similar deal approaching from a, very, a pretty different axis. A little hard to cast. Like Neoform Krom or Edge Revolution Krom. Edge Revolution, you know, one of our four drops is something like that. So we can get into play or we can Dockside into it. Just a powerful card. I don't think there's any combos within this deck. We're not doing like curiosity. And then Razaketh, which is a powerful thing to reanimate. So in the description, we're doing Agatha Soul Cauldron stuff again. Soul Cauldron lines up really well with Rayhan, lines up really well with Razaketh because we can entomb it, activate the cauldron, turn one of our other creatures or multiple creatures into Razaketh's. If you're setting up Razaketh stuff, you probably have some creatures in play. You just need to tutor like once or twice and then you're good. We do have the reanimate to just get one of these things into play. We are on life death. You don't need it, but pretty much unbeatable. <laughs> You basically can't lose is, you know, if you've got a decent amount of interaction, you life death. Razaketh is like, it becomes a guaranteed win instead of probably a win. And then tutors and ways to interact with the board, powerful stuff, calling ritual, mnemonic betrayal, ways to get through our creature, you know, chain a dork into a dock side, turn a dock side into a massacre girl or something like that. Instance, lots of interaction. We got the entomb to put stuff away. Of course, we got the console. We got brain freeze. We're breaching. We're thoracling. We're on the veil of summer. Got the abrupt decay too. Kind of what you would expect. Packed negation. Some of the decks that are really, really mid range don't like running this. Right now, I feel like I just throw this in every mid range deck. Like I just get into points where I have the 
mana and I just I need free spells. So I really like Pact Negation right now. We're not ad nauseing. Uh if you want to know why, just look at Razaketh into Niv Mizzet. We're not that crazy. And then artifacts. We are in the Soul Cauldron, one ring, no talismans in the list. We're not doing any of that. So it is interesting we're not really doing talismans or dorks. I mean, two dorks is like that's just like a little splash of dork. Enchantments, survival of the fittest. One, you can just tutor up, right? This just means any creature can be Dockside or Thassa's Oracle. That alone is pretty powerful. Um, It can make it easier to assemble, like, not really win cons, but broken synergies, like, oh, let me go get Dockside and Mayhem Devil, Massacre Girl, and Orcish Bowmasters. I don't think she, she's on any wheels, right? So no wheels, so not going to wheel with Bowmasters, but I think that was one thing she had asked about on Twitter if she would run a wheel. Just throw a wheel on here, dude. But yeah, and then you can always just, oh, I have Razaketh in my hand, discard it, or discard random creature, get Razaketh, discard Razaketh, activate Soul Cauldron, my things with Razaketh at instant speed, tutor up for stuff. Still going to be good. And then, of course, Breach and Mystic Study. On the 28 lands, we are Gaia's Cradle deck. This is a really cool deck that Priscilla has had pretty good results with already and continues to play, really enjoys the deck. It seems great. Seems like a lot of fun. I think if you want to play a four color pile, you don't like Blue Farm, maybe you don't like the white cards, you're not that big on Timna, or you just are a little bit of a hipster. Any of these cards like really stick out to you. You like the kind of creature package. This is something you could definitely pick up. You could certainly customize it. You could decide, you know what? I want to maybe speed it up a little bit, throw in like, uh, you know, a few more ritual effects and then like a wheel and maybe cut one or two of the creatures that I'm, I don't really like. I think there's a lot of fear that you could experiment with and there's just a lot going on i think pressuring life totals right now is just pretty good in the mid game i think it's really important that if you're a deck that isn't trying to win super fast that you're able to do something better than the other slower decks like you have to do something better than temnacrom if you're a slower deck or you're just going to get eaten alive by those decks i think that this deck does Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Let me know down below your votes for pod number three, which are these four decks. And pod number four, which are these four decks. Let me know that and future video, I will be posting probably next week, the results of this one. And we will be putting the last four decks against each other and declare a winner. So let me know which was your favorite. Let me know if you like this format. I am gonna be looking into doing some similar contests, maybe with different themes, maybe stuff like deck building with some kind of restraint or deck building and like a different ban list or custom cards. So let me know what your ideas are for something similar to this that can maybe get some more engagement from you guys and just be able to showcase some more cool stuff like this. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, go play CEDH. Have a good one, everybody.